Good. Thank you. So there's Hello, big testing one, two, three, one, two. Three. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, um, Henry's gotten hip. Henry's gotten hip. Could give a rat's ass about Sean, and uh, he's more concerned about his new lifestyle. And uh, and uh, unfortunately, as we go back into this episode, this crime, his cop stuff comes back. Sean gets on his nerves and slowly disintegrates his incredible world that he's had. Sean ruins everything. Always. <laughs> Why do you think Henry retired so early? It seems like he's still so viable. Well, I'm 62, so Henry retired at 60 ish. He didn't retire. I mean, that's when cops retire. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think he retired that early. Although he retired during the show. That's what I mean. Like, he was retired at the beginning and then he comes back. So. You know, you know, because you got to do something. I mean, <laughs> you got to, like, retire to come back. You got to have your character killed off to come back. It's how we survive in TV. You got to get married, get divorced, you got to die, come back. Now that Henry said, does that mean no more Hawaiian shirts? No. This, this is actually Henry's shirt. Because I, I might have stolen it from Mordra. Uh No, there are no Hawaiian shirts. I know. I know. Sorry. Well, I mean, Henry used to like to go fishing and stuff a lot too, so if he's had a little change of character, does that mean a change in hobbies as well? Uh, no, Henry still fishes. In fact, he's got a. Uh, He's moved out of his house, he sold it to Lassiter, and he has a very cool loft overlooking the water where he keeps an eye on his boat. Because he's, he's a guy who's like, I'm not going to get my boat out of my sight. So he's definitely got his boat, but moves into a very hip, cool, chill loft environment. And uh, yeah, and he spends money on clothing, <laughs> evidently. Do you feel sad? Where's Black? Do you feel satisfied with, with the coming back at this point with the reunion and then and what place that Henry is in? Yeah, it's a, it's a great place to start him. Um, it's not such a leap. You always wonder, you know, would Henry really do that? I always, there were a couple episodes, especially with Sybil Shepherd, where we went to, I'd go to Sean and go, I'm not the guy you, th that Henry that everybody thinks is Henry is the, is the way Sean sees him. I think there's a line in this one, I don't think I'm giving anything away, Sean says, aren't you like a hundred and, you know, I say, Sean, how old do you think I am? And he goes, I don't know, it's got like a couple of zeros behind it though. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's always been the way Sean thinks of Henry. Henry's probably thought, he's pretty cool, I mean, look, he had Civil Shepherd as a wife, you know, dumped her for who knows what. So the rest of the group has kind of moved away from Santa Barbara. What can you tell us about how Henry kind of plays a role within this whole movie? Uh, well, Henry still lives in Santa Barbara, and a crime takes place that involves and puts in jeopardy the crew, and Henry's instincts are he has to be there to... It's also Christmas, so he's coming to visit. And then the crime, and so he has to jump in and be a part of it. The minute he sniffs out something going down, out comes his gun. You know, that's him. You can take the cop out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the cop. You can't take the cop out of the city, whatever. One of those. You also mentioned that you didn't do any singing in the musical episode. Are we going to sing some maybe Christmas carols? Uh... Not from Henry. Not from Corbin. Not from Henry. God gave me a lot of gifts. It ain't that. Singing's not one of them. I don't sing happy birthday at a birthday party. Literally, for some, I just, I, I can't write, I can build you a house, I can write you a screenplay, I can direct a film, I can navigate you across the ocean, but do not ask me to sing you happy birthday. Every time I try, he just goes, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be one thing you can't do. Yeah. Because of the movie, there's been a bit of a strain in the relationship between him and Sean. Can you talk about how it's developed over the years? It's in his mind. Henry's always been okay with Sean. Sean's had a problem with Henry. You know, you know Henry, as a father, would like to see his kid grow up. 
like any dad does. But I've never had a problem. In fact, I'm the one who's recognized because Sean's observing abilities that I taught him have made him a good cop, even though he's not a cop. I've just always encouraged him to just do it righteously, not fakely. You know, so Henry's never really had a problem with Sean. Sean, I think, has had a bigger problem with Henry. So, I'm cool. If he's not, that's his problem. There's oftentimes a, a difference between the actor and the character they portray. Just curious, would you be friends with Henry? Would you hang out with Henry? No. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. I might use him to go fishing if he had a boat, but no. No, not even, not even close. But I'm not friends with a lot of people. I don't really like people. <laughs> but, I mean, I love all people. I don't really, it's like, I find creative people interesting, but for the most part, I'm not like a, I find this is great music group, Comic-Con people as a group. But I mean, I walk around and go, like if I go to a market or something, I don't like them, I don't like them, I don't like, I'm not, not, it's not like a mean thing, I just don't really, I don't really care for people and their problems. <laughs> people have so much shit in their lives, I just don't, I, even, I don't care. Um, it sounds really mean and it's going to come across wrong, I know, I'm certain, but, uh, I mean, I love people, I just don't, I don't need to get involved in their dramas. I, I, I do care about people who are underdogs, who are, got the card stacked against them. I do tend to relate to those people more, you know, uh, but that's why I moved out of LA, we moved to France, I moved, I'm gone. I just can't, um, people in LA and Starbucks writing screenplays, just, no, I don't know. Well, I have this screenplay for you to listen to. <laughs> Show it to him. <laughs> Tell me if it's good. I do care about people. <laughs> I do care about it. Don't, that's, I'm sounding terrible. I do care about people. I don't... It's, a, it's an age... I don't really have time to invest in... You know what? I don't have time to... I find a lot of people are really lazy. And life is pretty simple. I was thinking the other day, what's it all about? You know, literally, I was thinking, I was making a movie that I just wrote and directed and just finished called Life with Dog. And I was thinking a lot because it's within the movie. It's like, what is the purpose of all of this stuff? What are we doing here? You know, and then you look in the news, you see all this crap going on. I think, like, it's this beautiful experience of people, of oceans and sunrise and sunsets and trees and flowers and birds and animals. And people tend to like just get into the mud of it all. And that's not interesting to me. To write about it maybe is, but on a personal basis, it's, it's you know, I, as I get older, it's like, get over yourselves. I can't tolerate the bullshit. Last question, guys. Last question. Yeah. I was gonna say, well, I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> life with dogs. But, but the fan reaction, have you got any feedback? Like for, for this? Yeah. yeah, it's great. We have the, you know, everybody will tell you they got the best fans in the world. We have great fans and people have great fans, but I will tell you that I know, and James tried to say this up on the panel, but I know when I do a play, or I'm sure a band, which I would never understand because I can't sing, as I've told you, but if a band plays, I've heard that, that reaction, that, that inner reaction between the music and the audience, you know, the giver and the receiver. To some degree, I suppose it's like a sexual experience. It's the give and take of all things. Um, that's really paramount. And when we make our show, even though we're on the sound stage, we're up in Vancouver, I know we're making it with the audience in mind. We can, I can you can almost feel them being right there, like you're on stage. And um, and we all, and I know that we do that to answer your question because we're so powered by that 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 appreciation of the fans. Yeah. Well, personally, I know for me, I found out that it's like yeah, <laughs> like it's very. Funny. And that makes it good for us. So what we do is, if nobody's watching, I've been on shows where nobody watches. Um, I went. I even did an episode of a show last season 
but you can look at my IMD and try to figure it out. But you you just knew there was nobody watching the show, and you could feel it. All the gear was there, the words, the actors, the makeup, the hair, but you just knew outside the stage door. There's no LA Law. We knew the audience was there, and it's just a totally different thing. This is like an uber audience. It's unbelievable. I do like people. Don't get me wrong. Please. I correct me. I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. Bye. Thank you.